Lorenzen Wright, born November 4th, 1975, died July 19th, 2010. Before he was murdered for the world to hear. Georgetown 911, where's your emergency? Lorenzen Wright was a former pro basketball player that earned over $55 million in the NBA and lost most of it after retirement along with his marriage. He was a top 10 pick in the classic 96 NBA draft and expected to change the LA Clippers fortune as finally they thought they had their big man of the future. He had size, pedigree, in the right era for his skill set, and most importantly, opportunity. All was good for Lorenzen as a basketball player, even if the NBA level proved too much for him. An All-American in high school, college double-double machine, to being drafted before names like Steve Nash, Jermaine O'Neal, and Kobe Bryant. He had a smooth mid-range jump shot that afforded him 13 seasons in the NBA and paid beyond his dreams growing up in Mississippi. Sadly, he died in 2010 at just 34 years old, backdoored by his own ex-wife. Here's a mix of three important sub-stories in the life of Lorenzen Wright and the lesson that making it is only the beginning. Choices financially, on the court, and with the people you choose to be around you play an important role in if you stay there and keep what you've earned, and much darker if you keep your life. Wright was a 6'11 center from Oxford, Mississippi that moved to Memphis for his senior year in high school. A natural talent, Wright sprung to 6'10 and became an All-American and one of the best players in the nation. He decided to stay close to home and signed with the University of Memphis, where he was an immediate impact player as a freshman, leading the team in scoring and rebounding, taking them to the regional semifinal of the 95 NCAA tournament. Stunt number one would stun at him as a basketball player. The basketball story of Lorenzen Wright's growth continued into his sophomore year where he upped his scoring from 14.8 points per game to 17.4 in year two. He averaged 10 rebounds a game as a freshman and sophomore and after losing in the first round of the 96 NCAA tournament, he decided this was the right time to put his name in the draft and many franchises were eager for their shot at what seemed a big that could not only post up but run the floor and finish in multiple ways. The Clippers took him with the seventh pick, expecting him to start right away seeing as their only true center of significance on the roster was Kevin Duckworth. But Wright struggled immediately off the bench and didn't show improvements in his game from college. It was the first sign anyone had seen that maybe Wright wasn't as good as they thought and may even turn out to be a bust. He averaged 7 points a game and 6 rebounds as a rookie and 9 points and respectable 8 rebounds as a second year player. Just 2 years in the league at 22, the Clippers grew worried that Wright, who also couldn't stay healthy and was playing less and less games for them due to injury, may need to be replaced. They gave him one more season in 98-99 to which his production fell to its lowest for them and they lowballed him in extension, offering a 6-year 30 million contract to which Wright declined and requested out. The Clippers took a few draft picks and agreed to a trade with the Atlanta Hawks who then signed him to a 7-year $42 million contract. In his first season with the Hawks, still dealing with knee and other minor injuries, his production was unsatisfying, taking another dip. With a coaching change and more minutes, Wright showed what was expected of him four years ago as a rookie, averaging 12 points a game and almost 8 rebounds. At this point, it was clear that he didn't have the footwork, finishing ability, and strength to bang in that era, and his jumper hadn't improved either, making him a liability, especially after small knee injuries. He was traded to Memphis and had two solid seasons there before he was a 12th man role player at best. 
he managed to play his last productive season in 2003 and an end of the bench guy for the rest of his career, spanning over six years and four different teams. Stunt number two, what stunted him financially. Making $50 million in a career sounds like a life that's secured and you could simply lay back and enjoy a luxury lifestyle the rest of your life. Until you realize how many basketball players go broke due to the premature spending of money before actually possessing the money with the NBA's increment system. It's easy to lose track of a million here, a million there, when you're getting paid a small percentage of that every month or bi-weekly. Lorenzen also had a careless habit for having a good time, spoiling his friends and family, and buying houses and cars on credit which would later be foreclosed. He'd be sued over time for unpaid taxes, private schooling for his kids, and financial companies wanting reimbursement for money allowed to buy property. After retirement, almost all his liquid assets were gone and he was reportedly turning to the streets to flip his money. Claims made by his ex-wife who would later spend time in jail for his murder. He was able to take a million dollar life insurance policy on himself to be used for his kids if something happened. His ex-wife and mastermind in his death would spend it all on herself later on. Stunt number three, what stunted his growth as a person? The body of former pro basketball player Lorenzen Wright has apparently been found in Memphis. Hello? As a person, Wright was respected in the Memphis community and tried to help as many people as he could, even if this meant loaning out 30000 here, 20000 there. But obviously, in hindsight of his demise, he had the wrong circle. One that used him for his fame and money, almost sucking his pockets dry and also got him killed. On July 19th, a phone call was made to Memphis police without a voice. It was Lorenzen Wright on the other line who couldn't speak because he was maybe being followed and hid in silence from his killers. You hear shots ring off as he was hit up to 11 times, including two headshots. His body was found a week after being reported missing, decayed and unrecognizable. His wife, Shira Wright, was not charged immediately for his death, but because of the suspect way she was moving after his death financially, cashing in his life insurance, and spending all but $5 of it on vacations, cars, and luxury, investigators began looking into her as a possible suspect. She denied involvement for years after his murder and while locked up awaiting trial. That's until one of the men she hired to kill her former husband for allegedly cheating was arrested and confessed to his involvement and to Shira's mastermind plan. Fearing he would testify against her, she took a deal that spared life in prison and gave her just 30 years beginning in 2019 with the chance of parole in 2026. As a basketball player successful at young ages like high school, one of the important lessons and tests you will face and want to pass is the choosing of the person you allow to live your future professional life with you. Trust is something tough to come by for a person of your stature, and I would even advise you not even get legally attached to a person, along with telling them the truth about your intentions. If you do get married, make sure to stay as faithful as she'll allow you to be, because as seen here, the wrong choice can get you set up and killed with little justice. All in all, I think Wright's story is one of the more real and stereotypical stories of what comes with fortune and fame. Huge beginnings, lack of attention to your craft, irresponsible spending, bad circle choices, going broke to even being murdered because you're worth more dead than alive. Hopefully his family has found or finds peace and his story is told for many years as a lesson never to be forgotten.